All right, let's verify this trig identity. My suggestion is you write the answer down at the bottom, like I always do in all my videos, so that you can always just work again across, work across the equal sign, or not across, work only on this side and keep changing it until it equals the other side that you had. So that's my goal. That's and I like to write it down here so I can see what my goal is. So first of all, you'll notice that I have how many terms up here in my original? Not many. I actually have only one term. It's just one big term. This right here is one big term. Mm -hmm. And I want two separate terms. So I'm going to have to split them up somehow. Now, what you cannot do is you can't you can't write this and distribute it down here. That just doesn't work. A lot of people make that mistake. Again, if you want to check if that's right, you can do something like this. 4 plus 1, something like that. And that does not equal 2 over 4 plus 2. That just doesn't equal that. Mm -hmm. So you can't do that. So instead, you're going to have to figure out some other way to simplify this. Now, there's this little trick that if you haven't ever seen it before, you really wouldn't know to use it. And it's called um, multiplying by a conjugate of something. So just remember that whenever you have stuff like this, the conjugate of one minus sign is one plus sign. And the reason is because you remember that little, that little rule that a squared minus b squared mm -hmm. equals a plus b and a minus b. Mm -hmm see these those are well I don't know if they're technically called conjugates mm -hmm. but those in my mind are conjugates of each other that's that's how they work together okay so we're, what we're really doing is I'm using that trick and I'm going backward with it like again how would you know to do that well, you'd know because you've seen it in these problems before so when I do that what am I going to get I'm going to multiply well, actually let me let me write in red let me write in red what hasn't changed. So cosine theta <coughs> times one plus sine theta all over. And what's gonna happen when I multiply one plus sine theta times one minus sine theta? Remember what I showed you right here? What am I gonna get? I'm gonna get one squared minus sine squared of theta. That makes sense how that how I came up with that. Mm -hmm. And again, do you see how I don't actually have to show the work here? I don't have to write. I don't have to say anything except just what I showed you so far, mm -hmm. because your teacher will know that you did it the right way if you did that. Mm -hmm. In fact, your teacher will be proud of you if you did that because that's kind of a tricky thing to do. So the next step is what do I know about one minus sine squared? Well, remember how sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Mm -hmm. So what is if I subtract the sine squared over, what is one minus sine squared equal? Cosine it equals squared. cosine squared. So this is on the bottom, that's just cosine that's squared. Really so what do I have here? I have, I have cosine theta times, let's just, let's just not change anything on the top yet, okay? All over, and now I'm going to just change that bottom back. That's going to be cosine squared theta. So I didn't change. The red stuff was stayed the same. The other stuff didn't. All right, now what can I do? Now am I able to cancel anything out? Uh, one of the cosines. Yeah, now because see how the cosine is the factor of the entire numerator? and a factor of the entire denominator now because that's being multiplied now i can cancel that out i'm not distributing it to two i'm canceling it out because it's like i'm pulling it out front okay so what does this equal it's going to equal again let's just change what has the red is going to be what didn't change so one plus sine theta didn't change that's on the top and what did change is on the bottom i canceled out a cosine with that other cosine and i just have a cosine theta left. What's the next step now? Um, you have to break them into two terms. Exactly. Right? Now, remember in the very beginning I said you can't distribute it? 
That's because the top thing was the single term or the single factor and the bottom. Now it's the opposite way. So now this way I can write this as one over cosine theta plus sine theta over cosine theta. I can do that now. In other words, I'm distributing the denominator into the two numerators. Think of it like this. Remember when you had like, um, I don't know, x, x plus 5 over 5? <coughs> You could rewrite that as x over 5 plus 1, like when you're doing that in Algebra 1 for like linear equations and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is true. And what's the next step? Uh, simplifying it. There is no next step. It's done, right? Mm -hmm. That is what it equals, so I'm done. And there's my answer. So let me just summarize what uh, the takeaway here is. Whenever you see, whoops, whenever you see a denominator like this, where you have a plus or a minus, like a term in the bottom, two terms in the bottom, but a single thing on the top, or even if it's not a single thing on the top. One of the strategies that you use a lot is, is what I just showed you. It's utilizing this, rule, this property right here, but going backward to utilize it. So again, how would you know that? <laughs> you wouldn't. Honestly, you wouldn't. It would take a brilliant person to, under, to really think to do that and that's okay that you don't think to do that, but now that you've seen it, kind of put that in your memory bank and remember that, so that if you see it on a test or a quiz or another problem, you can kind of, oh wait, I remember doing this one time, mm -hmm. and then try it, and a lot of times that'll just fix it for you.